Hello everyone, it's Kyle from Newcastle Fans TV with uh, Lee, Rob and Johnny and it's uh, my turn to do the mini series and I've decided to cover something a bit more recent for what more of like we're younger generation of fans. I've went for the 2011-2012 season I've went for under Alan Porch of the year we finished fifth in the Premier League. Going into this season, if you can remember, what what were you fe- what were you feelings going into it? Because we just sold Kevin Nolan at the time. I remember. I I I all, back then. I always used to do it predicting what the table would look like before the start of the season. What it would look like at mm. the end of the season. I put us nineteenth. Wow. Wow. Nineteenth. So uh, it proved. I remember. Wrong. I remember yeah. Nolan because didn't he go? Didn't he not sign for Newcastle because they offered him a five year deal, and he went to West Ham. Ah, uh, he wanted a long term commitment by. From the club and they didn't give him it because so of his age. Because so he went to West Ham for a five year deal. Mm. Do you remember anticipating this season, Johnny? Uh, for me, I was very worried because obviously Barton left after the Sunderland game. Yeah. Obviously, Nolan oh, left. led Nolan. left. Carroll had gone in the January beforehand. Trophy Cucci replacement. <laughs> but the thing was, it was it was kind of like the changing of the old guard. You know, you got yeah. rid of them and then you had the likes of Colaccini being the main man, really. He was yeah. the captain of the club. You had the likes of Teote and Kabai in the middle of midfield and Denver Bar up front. So it was a new generation, Tim Krul and goal. Mm. So I was worried in the sense that I didn't think we'd... I think we'd still be in a relegation battle. Um, Things got nasty, though. It's it did, ask, that's it? when it started, uh, probably a couple of years before that. That's when the Ashley carry on with the name change and all that were going mm. over. Yeah, the name, cha- the name change happened over this season, but yeah. I didn't want to like bring it up because it's like a, it's supposed to be like a happy video. Nah, yeah, it's, it's supposed to be a happy it's video. It's negative. Yeah. So like, I'll bring it up, me, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was going to not, but we've brought it up now, so... If you can remember, if you can remember before he changed the name, he did something with the price of the season tickets about three or four weeks beforehand, and I'm telling you, I remember going into Newcastle and there were queues out the, outside the club shop to get these season tickets at the cut prices, or I, I think it was only like two games into the season, so you can have the rest of them for a certain amount, and it was like, oh yeah, I'm getting on, I'm getting on that, I'm getting on that, and then three weeks later, there's a stadium name change, and you could just, it was typical like Ashley. It was like you were fished in, you were yeah. reeled in. It's like anything that's else. when it started. Yeah. Well, he's done, he's done that every summer oh, yeah. since really yeah. with fair. Uh, oh, there's going to be a takeover. Didn't Arguably, yeah. yeah. Sports Direct Arena must be in America because I don't I don't know if that stadium. All I know is St James's Park, and uh, that's all I'll ever know. You can't take away your heritage. If you move to a new stadium, you can rename it. But if you're staying where you are, where you where the club was born, it can it can be changed. It'll never be changed in the fans' eyes. To be in the Premier League, you do need huge finances. But while you stay at the same stadium, and that it, it's been known as that stadium since the club was formed, it should never be changed. And it, it will not, not I, I'll guarantee you, not one of those 52,000 will refer to that stadium as, as what's been mentioned today. They will refer it as St James's Park. But uh, the signings we brought in, I thought were really encouraging to be fair. Brought in Demba Bar, who had a really good end of the last season when he scored I think it was 7 and 13 for West Ham. He did yeah. really well. So to bring him in on a free was. There was a couple of suspicions around his injuries problems. but Yeah, it was under the nose of Stoke, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. Stoke, but Stoke, because of the knee injury, said that. No. Yeah, and uh, the later regretted that as well. Then he got on later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and also signed a little known Frenchman called Johan Kabay in that, uh, in that transfer window. I'll be honest, I well. didn't know who he was. I uh, didn't know who he was, but upon research, I was really impressed with who he was. At the time, because he, ca- he captained Lille to a uh, title just beforehand. And I, was thinking, yeah. I think they put him on a free kick, watch I, him do I, magic. I think every bloke had a mind crush on Johan Kabay. I did at some point. Mm-hmm. I was broken yeah. when he left, because uh, Sunderland um, beat 3-0. The a couple of days after. couple of days after, yeah. I was just broken, honestly. That was mm-hmm. the first derby I went to that as well. I was shattered. But... Uh, the season started with a boring nil-nil draw against Arsenal. Uh, ever since we've came up from the Championship the first time, we've always been drawn against one of them big sides uh, in the league and Arsenal was mm. no exception to that and it was a boring nil-nil draw. But the next game is the one that yeah. most yes. people remember. It's uh, over the Ryan wall. Taylor over the wall. Newcastle uh, beating Sunderland 1-0 at the stadium without any memories of that, lads? Um, I was actually at the game. Where? You, you went? I was actually at the game but I was in the Sunderland on that day. You went where? He was in the Sunderland yeah. end. That's mm. the popular one here. That's a little secret for you. Um, no, I was just out. Literally. Did your mum bully you? Did you sneak in? No, I, do you know what it was? I'm not even joking. My brother was on a school trip and my dad was away and I thought, I'll go. I'll go. 
But I literally, I'm not even joking. Do you know when you think that you're not going to score? When you have, for example, yeah. when Gabby Obertan's on the right hand side and he's cr- and he's coming in, you think <laughs> you think he's you know for a fact he's not going to score. Every single time, I thought we had a chance of attacking. I had my hands in my pockets, or I had my hands like this covering my mouth. I'm thinking, oh, it'd be torture that. It was torture. The run Ryan said I had the free kick. I'll always remember some going, some fan going behind us. He's gonna miss. And when it goes in, I'm just looking. Oh, God, I want to look at the same night. One look at the same night. We're gonna win. We might win. How, did, <laughs> you, how did you not celebrate? I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't I, know. I wouldn't have been able to um, contain myself. Nice, some, nice summer day as well. Been, it was lovely. I would, I would have been probably stabbed up. The best, <laughs> the best bit was when at the end it was the last game for Joey Barton, and he's just walking off, and all the Southern fans are getting them shit. And literally, he's just goes, come on, <laughs> right at them. And literally, it was just made my day. I had like a little smile on, but no one could tell. But I was just like, I was walking back, walking off the stairs, just going, I can't believe Joey Wise has done that. Yeah, get in. Of course, he, he haunted Sunderland at the end of last season as well. He did, yeah. There's Brown watching Stephen Taylor. Miobi waiting to, and Mignolet is beaten. Newcastle United lead in the weird time, Derby. Stephen Taylor closed in, but did the ball sail all the way in? Well, it's a fabulous effort from Ryan Taylor, but I just wonder if Mignolet's starting position here. He was so far towards his near post. And I think he more or less offered Ryan Taylor the back post. After that, we'll go on to beat Scunthorpe in the, in the League Cup. Not many, t- not much you could say win a cup game, but it goes, goes on to deadline day and we'll sign... Uh, David Sant on and uh, current mm. third choice goalkeeper Rob Elliott on deadline day that year. What were your initial thoughts of um, David Sant on coming? Sant on one I was more promising because he's a young lad signing from Inter Milan. You're thinking, you know, see, he's got I some heard, caps for Italy. See what I heard was um, what I heard he was a striker and then they moved him to a left back. So I was thinking. Mm. I knew he was a full back and I thought we were going to Italian international. Yeah. Again, Rob Elliott playing in like two leagues low. I didn't know much of him. I always thought Ellie mm. was coming in to be the sub goalkeeper. I, I just honest. thought he's never going to be. You know, I think that's an Alan Pardew signing, believe it or not. Because mm. again, the signings were weren't made by him. They obviously had the different yeah. Graham Carr and you know all that involved. The deadline day, we've got a, um, another cup win against um, Paul's favourite team outside of Newcastle in a four <laughs> three win. <laughs> I can just hear him going, uh, "You yes. yeah." Um, that's the one for you, Paul. But after that, we had two draws. One at Villa Park, which was a 1-1 draw. She had given had, a, had a storm out of a performance. And uh, a 0-0 draw against QPR and Loftus mm, Road. That was uh, my birthday, that. I think it was a Wednesday, uh, Monday, Monday night. Monday night, Monday night yeah. And uh, I remember Ryan Taylor and Joey Barton speaking to each other after the game. And Ryan Taylor said, why did you leave? And obviously it came out now why he did leave. Because uh, obviously all the crap that Joey Barton had with Mike Ashley. So... But after after those, I think two. I think there's going to be a common theme in especially your your three videos is Shea Gibbons' performances <laughs> and Mike Ashley. I pretty much. I bet those I bet those have been mentioned a few times. There would have been, especially I suppose the comments of people have the they say on that one as well. But after um after these two draws, we played Blackburn in at home, and mm. uh, a certain Denver Ball made his name known on this on this day because. Well, he, before that game, he was absolutely abject, wasn't he, when he started? Yeah, I remember me dad seeing. I remember the Scunthorpe fun, like, game. Yeah, yeah, he, I, Scunthorpe just made a mess out of him. Yeah, and um, Denver likes, likes his golden syrup though. It, yeah, strawberry, 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 strawberry syrup. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I scored a hat trick. It's actually debated whether he did score a hat trick or not. He got given the hat trick, but I think oh, it was yeah. Leon Best's goal, the third one. The third it, one, because it, I think it touched like Drake, didn't he? It, it does look like Drake, but that's uh, feathered, maybe, I but. Mean, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, he scored a hat trick, made mm. his uh, made his name known, and gone got on the score sheet for it. And I think we actually put we um, I think it was in the top three. Okay. But uh, I after that there was a win at Mol- Molyneux, something we've only done. That? <laughs> <laughs> like, All these games you should have covered this season instead of me. Was, but uh, I win yeah. at, win at Molyneux. But in the cup, if you remember, I remember listening to this on the uh, radio with uh, McLaws. In commentary, daylight robbery beaten in the cup by Blackburn with oh, I was there. three controversial <laughs> offsides. Johnny was there for most of this season, mm. but uh, I three controversial offsides. Do you want to talk for them? I Johnny? can talk you for the game. I remember Blackburn taking the lead. Uh, it actually went two 0 up in the last it, last minutes. Yakubu, possibly, but I remember Danny Guthrie scoring about yes. thirty yards out. Really good finish, and then and then Kabai free La- kick, two oh. goals in the last minute. Oh. Uh, 
to draw what, 2 2. What yeah. a free kick, by the way. And it was perfect because as soon as he hit it, you knew it was going in top corner. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think Bappe went 3 2 up. We got about the 3 3 penalty from Peter Lavoncrans. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was 4 3 in the last minute. It was a debatable offside. It looked offside when, when it was live, but whether it was or not, it would have been close. But um, I think we were a bit unlucky. I think we deserved at least penalties that, that night. But um, yeah. That was probably that was probably I think our first defeat in the whole season. Yeah, it was. It yeah. was I. That's well, right. if you count that as well, you will have to count that as a defeat. Yeah. But after after Blackburn and a couple bounced back really well, they have they had a scene when they win the Premier League. You can can you do it on a cold rainy night in Stoke? Yeah. We actually did. Um, we've touched <laughs> on it before. Denver Bar scoring the hat trick. I don't think there's any sort of animosity there between Denver or or this football club. Um, he did a great job at West Ham, and obviously, I brought him to Newcastle, and he's been absolutely terrific. Don't think this is a one-off from him. His link-up play, his all-round ability, and he's finishing. He's on the move in the box. If you're on the move in the box, you're going to score goals, and he, and that's why he got his first two. And the third one, just sheer confidence to hit a penalty like that. Wasn't Denver Bar booed by the Stoke fans? He that was because yeah. the old uh, turn them down. Do you know down. what I remember from Stoke? Just going off topic is Rory Delap. Do you remember oh, well, Rory Delap? Oh, they right. sort of died down by then. Cause but like, he, yeah. they had that reputation. That was the most corny. Because yeah. he used to like throw it in like that. It, it, was, was, it was the most tawny, pureless oh, thing ever in Premier League yeah. history. It was just a depressing. Tackle that work, mind. It, 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 for a couple of seasons. And then All the fans were remember out. Dave Challoner from Tramia. Yeah. Right, but after the Stoke game, he, he, Lee reading me notes there. I want to remember um, beating Everton 2 1 with uh, Ryan Taylor's Thunderbolt. And I remember at the time people were starting to call for his head a bit and like asking for him to be dropped out of the team for a few couple because of days. Because he was playing the wrong position, he's playing mm. a left back, he's a right footed left back. It's hard enough to play left back as well. Oh, I know yeah. that, but a couple of people were calling for David Santon yeah. coming to the squad because he was just he was new and up and coming and he had this hype around him for being a, a highly rated by Jose Mourinho, if I remember right. Ryan Taylor's throw. Wait by Rodwell. It's Ryan Taylor again, he's encouraged to shoot! What a strike from Ryan Taylor! Headed away by Rodwell, and when it came back to Ryan Taylor, that was inch perfect. But that goal from Ryan Taylor, I think it brought him a couple more weeks into the squad, because <laughs> it was a fantastic goal, takes on the chest. He's a Liverpool lad, so it means the world to him. One goal of the month, didn't it? It did win goal of the month, it was fantastic another woodwork. Aye, uh, that's right. It was, a, it was a brilliant goal by uh, Ryan Taylor. And I kept winning to the top three. And then uh, the first league defeat of the season came in. And uh, it was a defeat at the Etihad to Manchester City. Uh, we lost 3-1, but can you name who scored for Newcastle? Dan Gosling. Dan Gosling. Dan Gosling. Dan Gosling. Yeah. Uh, uh, we responded with a 1-1 draw at Old Trafford. I remember Ferguson's interview after this. He went off it. Because yeah. uh, Ben Arthur went down for a penalty. It was, it was not a penalty. Stonewall, it, was, it? it was a Stonewall penalty. <laughs> Stonewall? <laughs> you know, uh, and yeah. the opposition team getting a penalty at Old Trafford mm. at the time was just unheard of. Oh. So. Mm. Well, everyone else, including the referee, it was a sounded. The referee was put in a terrible position. If you go back a few weeks ago, the linesman did exactly the same, gave a penalty kick, but it was never a penalty kick. But the, and the referee knew that, and he, he overruled the, 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 the linesman. So why can't the referee do that when he's so only so clear to it and so near to it? He's only eight yards away. So that was one of the worst of decisions I've ever seen. But you know the problem is the referees are full time or supposed to be full time, but the, the linesmen are not. And uh, whether he ever gets a game again, the assistant referee, that's not for me to decide. But it was an absolute shocking decision. The yes. world was stunned because yeah. uh, the world had found out that Gary Speeder took his own life. Yeah, I remember and, that. And uh, tributes pouring, as you'd expect. And as we record this, actually, it's World Mental Health Day, so mm. I'm sure they will put a couple of uh, links in the description if anyone's ever feeling like a- anything like do you that. Know, do you know, just to touch upon there, because I always remember I was on uh, Football Focus. Yeah, yes. and he was the a Welsh, before, he was a Welsh yeah. manager at the time. Yeah, and, they were, and it was yeah. the time when Wales, he turned that around. Yeah, he did. He'd right. been at Wales for a while, yeah. and then he was starting to get results. And with, no one found out the actual day. It was the next morning. Yeah, because it was all, it was all in yeah. the papers. Yeah, but as it's World Mental Health Day and it's such a serious subject, Leo put uh, links in the description to this video. If anyone's ever feeling like that, there's, I know it's daft, but the Facebook page is there if you ever need to message us about it it's a serious matter and it needs to be tackled more in modern society so it's just a tribute to Gary Speed 
what a fantastic man he was. Brilliant leader at Newcastle United, playing several hundred games for Newcastle. A lot of memories for you, Lee. A lot yeah, of memories for you, Johnny. Leeds fans. Um, Leeds fans in particular as well. Everton. They all enjoyed. Bolton, they all, Sheffield United. They all yeah. have memories of Gary Speed, even, even the Welsh fans with his managerial career. Mm. Good afternoon. The Welsh football manager, Gary Speed, has died at the age of 42. The Football Association of Wales has told the BBC that it appears he had taken his own life. Tributes are being paid to him on Twitter, including one from Robbie Savage, who said the world has lost a great man in Gary Speed. I'm devastated. I spoke to him yesterday morning. Why? 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 You know, as a captain, as my captain, when you know I was a young boy in the squad, and you know, he'd come to me and just I could go to my problems and. That feeling that he was so good with younger players for the national side, um, you know, Aaron Ramsey, Gareth Bale, and even slightly older as well. I mean, you know, uh, Bellamy, who's on great form now for Liverpool. I mean, he had the nucleus of something really good there. Yeah, he did. Uh... All right, we're going to leave it there. And the next time I sent him a message was yesterday morning. It said, sick rumour doing the rounds, mate. Please give me a call. There's no call. <laughs> oh, Bryn. Good friend of, of my family and my father played football for Wales and Gary was a really good friend. Um, and my father passed away, unfortunately, a, a while ago, but he's always been, you know, so such a nice person. And my, um, my son had leukaemia and he got a Bolton shirt signed for us and brought it to the house. And his, my sons have played tennis with his sons, and we're just such a wonderful family. And I just can't believe that this has happened. I don't know what's happened, but I just can't believe he's gone. I could stand here another 10 minutes and talk about Gary Speed. I just want to give him the accolade that he deserves. He'll be a miss. He'll be a miss in the treasure rooms. He'll be a miss in the training room. He'll be a miss in the restaurants. He'll be a miss on the planes, on the buses, in every concept. Uh, of that boy coming in to play football for Newcastle and departing, he will be missed. Well, remember, Bellamy couldn't play the following week. Yeah. Did, it, did he play or could he not play? No, he didn't put Liverpool with the Super Sunday game and he could, he, he went on the bus and found out on the bus. I think Dagbeach took him to one side and um, yeah. gave him the news and then I remember I remember she giving us crying, a crying, he was crying, upset. Yeah. 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 It was a it was really distressing time for for anyone involved with the man because he was a fantastic man and a life cut short for it early. Mm. But it's a tribute to Gary Speed and as I've touched on before, if anyone has any of them kind of problems with depression and things like that, to Click on these links and get the help that that you that is needed, and it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. But to move on like from hell. such a delicate subject, um, December for Newcastle, and it was such a difficult month because we drew to Swansea and we had defeats to Norwich, which was four five two. But uh, we we'll, we we'll cut that rut short, and um, we won two nil on Boxing Day at mm. uh, the Reebok. But uh, we didn't end the year on a good note because we lost to Liverpool um, at Anfield 3-1. Yeah. Goes shocked. through Daniel Lager and uh, for, uh, Daniel Lager for a defender, mind. He scored a few against us. But uh, some things never change and we'll, uh, I don't think we'll ever end the rut at Anfield, to be honest. We'll get a win nah. a couple of times in my lifetime, but don't say it other than that. But big, it was a big news off the pitch because uh, all the problems with Northern Rock, mm. we changed our um, sponsors sponsor? from Northern Rock for the first time in a couple of years. To um, I think it was Virgin, Virgin Money, and mm. uh, the first game with the Virgin Money sponsors. Yes. This is a this is a nice one for me. Um, three 0 against Man United. Um, Denver bars over the over the head volley. It's so underrated. It's such a great goal that was. Uh, yes. Not great knock on from Shola as well. Uh, Kabai's free kick as he slides into the Gallagher oh, end. Yes. Great memories. And then Phil Jones <laughs> does what mm. Phil Jones does. He, he's uh, do, still doing that now. Own goals to be fair. <laughs> Oh, Jones! Oh, no! And that really 
On the negative side of that, with the Northern Rock thing, because that was huge news. Because with it being oh, predominantly I... a northeast company in Newcastle as mm. well, losing that because a lot of people were uncertain around the jobs and all that. That's why that stands out yeah. a little bit more for me. Because we were like, "Are oh, they? We're sponsored by a company that's going to go bust." You know, the taxpayer unless we was going to have to save them. But then obviously we went to Virgin Media. Yep. Well, Virgin Money, sorry, not Media. Same company anyway. But until the end of the season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's indeed right. But three days later, we kept the kept the good run with the Virgin Money thing going as uh, we beat Blackburn in the FA Cup. But uh, this is remembered for one reason and one reason only, this Blackburn game. Hatton Benoff has a solo yeah. effort. That's better than his Bolton goal. Well, I mean, we'll touch on yeah. that one later on the video, but uh, what a run this is. He just... It, it was nominated for the Puskas Award. That's yeah, how good it, it was. It was a fantastic. Yeah. And the reason why not everybody get on YouTube and Google it. Mm. Get on YouTube, and Google it. You know what I meant? You search for it because it's in the FA Cup. It wasn't live or wasn't like shown broadcast like nationally. It was a three o'clock game. Three o'clock yeah, game. three o'clock game, yeah. and he oh, must go about six or seven players on the right hand flank and comes in and. It's how, he, oh. it's how he finishes it for it's me. Six he puts it in onto his left and just top hits the top of the goal and mm. keepers never get yeah, that. I personally, for me, let us know, but I think that's a better goal than the Bolton one for me. It's a good January for us because uh, we signed a little known number nine called Papi Sissi. <laughs> Couple of a uh, couple of days later, who were signing from? How much for? Follow Freiburg the job. for ten million pounds. Nine and a half on it. That's half right. It follows but, us, you know, Papi. Papi CC does follow us legend. indeed, and I uh, legend for especially these couple of months. And anyway, but uh, from what I remember, this January, I know everything was going well on the pitch, but the African Cup of Nations in particular killed mm. us. Uh, Chuck Tiote, God rest his soul. Mm. Um, Denver Bar, Dem- and then Papi um, Sissi was out with uh, the Senegalese team. The game against Aston Villa, Papi Sissi's debut, and he didn't actually start this game, did yeah, he? No, he uh, came the bench. It took a Leon best injury to bring him on, but we'll rem- remember that goal. It goes into the box on the bounce. Papi Sissi instinct in it, just like... hits it, and it just it just rises perfectly into the top corner. And uh, Shea Given, as great as a goalkeeper as he was. Was nowhere near it. He he could he could still be diving now when he get nowhere near that. No. It was absolutely brilliant. He could have had a step ladder. Could have had a trampoline. Nowhere near it. Absolutely brilliant. Two one win. I remember that because there was such hype around Papi Sissi and the goal that he scored. Because for a couple of months he only scored worldies, didn't he? Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> I'm couple, sure I'll touch upon the other one. A couple of a couple of shockers, unfortunately, coming up. We lost five 0 at White Hart Lane. We at that one, Johnny. I wasn't. No. He wasn't at that one. <laughs> um, it's just as well because that would have mm. probably been as bad Waste as the last one I've recently. <laughs> and uh, we threw a two goal lead away against Wolves at home. Yeah. We had the one one against Sunderland. Um, lucky to get a point. We were lucky to get a point. Uh, Sunderland took the lead early through a Nicholas Bentner pen- penalty. Mm. I don't. I still don't think it was a penalty, mind. Williamson but, scrapping in the box, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. Williamson. <laughs> I've, my opinion on him just stop manager but, of Gateshead now yes. player manager you but um, I remember I remember this in particular for Ben Arthur second half he came on at half time and Phil Bardsley I, do, I still don't think he's recovered uh, Ben Arthur <laughs> had his life that day and uh, a couple of minutes to go short, it fall, falls to Shola on the edge of the uh, on the edge of the six yard area and he just blasts it home honestly I think uh, you've called me bad for, for limbs in your time on in my time on this channel, but uh, I don't think was compare. this the last minute equaliser? Yeah. It was. I don't no, think I remember it, where I was because I, I was actually at work at Sky uh, for this one watching it. And you know what I'm like if a goal goes in, and obviously I've been chucked out of the building a couple of times, mm. and uh, I had to put get put in the room to calm down. Did I? That was calm a down. You don't calm down after things like that. Oh, when you're, when you're in a work environment and you can't get the day off, Oof, you know, cares, you, sometimes that, you forget where you are. It's Sky's fault because it shouldn't have put you in that kind of type of you, predicament. How dare you put me in that position? No, you know. <laughs> Keep changing fixtures and putting you in other predicaments as well, but that's uh, something you can't speak on. Yeah. But um, aye, no, the, lim- the limbs for that goal against Sunderland, unbelievable. And uh, then, after this game, Papi Sissi just uh, decides... You know what? I'm going to be Alan Shearer for a couple of months and just start <laughs> banging in the goals. Uh, the first one was against Norwich, West Brom away. For me, the, well, in, the, that's, in the in the that's orange in the orange kit, best away performance all season. Yeah, it, 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 for me, football, it was for me, it was the best away 
performance. I thought we were going to see a weird kit there. I was like, no, oh, no, no, no. The, be- the, be- the best away first half performance I've ever seen because we're 3 0 yeah. at half time. Yeah. I think uh, CC scored one or two. Ben Arthur scored. Ben Arthur definitely scored. Yeah, because he cut but in, didn't it he? Was, scored the first and third. Right, okay, so he had two. Uh, but that was the day Ben Arthur, Bar, and CC as a partnership. Arrived. I fell for yeah. Demba Barber because he was pushed out wide. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he, it's, it's harsh because he's banging the goals in. Then he sees this kid just come in and take his, take his role effectively, mm. and he's got to do. I know the roles reversed the following season. Yeah, but he was pushed out wide. Demba Bar struggled, struggle, not struggled, but struggled more. If that makes sense because he was playing out in the wing. But uh, after that, the famous game Liverpool, um, Jose Enrique were in the top five. Um, the ball goes in if he's head out for the first one. He, he beats Martin Skirtle to the ball and just puts it across uh, Pepe Reina's goal and it was an absolutely brilliant oh, head out. Oh, yeah. That's it, just honestly, like unbelievable. Andy Carroll. Yeah. Now, yeah, it was now a Newcastle it, player. It, 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 it was the first game yeah. Carroll came back and he dived for the penalty, didn't he? Mm-hmm. And he didn't get it. But uh, the second one, I think he gets it. He like, does a bit of a dribble and then it's just a tap in for yeah. him. But then... yeah. <laughs> it, uh, James Perch squares up the uh, Pepe Reina, yeah. Uh, Pepe Reina and he, yes. uh, Pepe Reina gets sent off, and ironically, Jose Enrique goes in in goal, and mm. you, you couldn't write it, man. It was it was mental. We're two 0 up against Liverpool. We're fighting for European contention. And the, the, the chance that day, because obviously the summer before Enrique left us because he said that he wants to move to a team. In know, the top five, in the and top that's five. where the chance came yeah. from. Jose Enrique were in the top five. Right. Yeah. And that went on for... But he spoke out against Ashley. He did speak yeah. out against Ashley, fair play to him for that, because not yeah. many do. The one I remember, especially in that orange kit, um, Swansea away. Oh, Brendan, oh. Brendan, Rogers were, uh, Brendan Rogers had Swansea playing so well at the time, though, I think they won a couple of game winning run, mm. and they absolutely dominated us in this game. The mm. proper pipe were bad. Like, um, I think we had two shots on goal, and they were both CC's goals, but what I'll remember it for is uh, Papi CC's chip. Do you reckon he meant it? Yes, yes, because yeah, he, he's fallen well. back and he's he's like halfway on his arse and he's chipped it he's, over the goal. Yeah. He's just realised that's all I can do. So like, do you reckon? I, I, see, I reckon he's I reckon he's slipped and it's, he's just where nah, he's, he's, nah, he's going he's down, mate. No nah. way. I think I reckon, I don't reckon he meant it. Michel Vaughan was one of the better goalkeepers in the league at the time, and he just mugged him off there. Like yeah. it was a great finish. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Whether he meant it or not, but uh, uh, we was mm. I've never seen us be so lucky away from home. Honestly, Swansea were really. Mm. Dominant that day, how we came up with a clean sheet and two goals ahead of them, I'd, I'd love to know. Mm. But uh, after that, w- it was a 2 0 win against Bolton. CC scored in this one, yeah. even though he was about he was a mile and a half side, offside. Yeah. It, it's not remembered for that one again, yeah. it's remembered for Ben Off as a turn a and then goal. running at the running at the defence. I remember watching this uh, in my granddad's house on the, on the telly, and it was just a Easter Monday, fantas- wasn't it? Yeah. It was just a fantastic yeah. goal, man. It I is was, a hell of a goal. I was gobsmacked with it. Ben Arthur, he's away from Ricketts. Now then, Cissé wants it played through now, and Ben Arthur delays it. Ben Arthur all the way! What a goal! That's a Ben Arthur! A magnificent goal! Lionel Messi would have been proud of that one! It needed something special to lighten St James's! And boy, have we got a special goal! Drawn against a, a, a below par side, and it was going to cost worth the time, and Ben Arthur just opens that game up, runs past David Wheater, and I think David Wheater's still trying to chase him now. David? <laughs> David Wheater? David Wheater, oh, that's, what the, that's what the Smoggies used to call him, isn't it? They used to call him David yes. Wheater. Probably the, can't the, David because he's more fancy than just David. <laughs> I mean, David Wheater. He's not it, Spanish, sorry. But it, he just knew <laughs> at that moment it needed something special, and Ben Arthur is probably the best player I've ever seen at Newcastle live. Yeah, in the mm. back of my shirt. Just talent. Solano was mine, but in terms of pure talent, he could change a game on a sixpence. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'll always remember that goal. It was a, it was just a. It'll be one man, pl- again one man of the um, one uh, goal of the month. It'll be, yeah. it'll be played but, through time for certainly amongst fans, like for sure. But after that, we made it six wins out of six, uh, with a win against Stoke City. But after this, unbelievably, we lost four 0 to Wigan. That was because that was. <laughs> Because uh, Wigan, for a couple of seasons under Roberto Martinez, had this thing where they'd leave it to the last eight games of the season and then they'd just it go on a Paul massive Jewel, run. Paul mm. Jewell as well. It, was, it wasn't just Martinez. It was, it was, it was culminated in, in like 
Martinez or Frank, him. Yeah. Franco De Santa just decided to turn into Lionel Messi for like <laughs> didn't he get his, Didn't he get his move to somewhere like Werder Bremen? Yeah, he, like, he got his move to. I think I think he's playing for yeah. Hamburg or Wolfsburg but it now. Was just, it was just crazy. He was, he was on the books for Schalke not so long ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was, he was he was plays just, for some kind of big yeah. German sites. It was just crazy because like we like when I was down there, it was just everyone was thinking right. This is the game that we probably will win, and it keeps us above like so Tottenham and Arsenal for the, for the mm. top four, and. We got we lost that game. We thought, how on earth we just got beat of them because they weren't anything special. But to be beaten the way we did was just yeah, yeah. The, the never been well. I remember I'll getting beat too well when Santa scored doing there. We've never been no, no we've never there. been prolific yeah. at Wigan. I was just, I was going to mention that actually. Been but in the championship, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, but ball that. Um, to be fair, they all responded quite well for the last win at Stamford Bridge, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Cissé. for us. Uh, Cissé with two of, hosting his own goal of that? the month and goal of the season. 18th, tournament. 18th birthday that day. But there were just howls of incredulity here at Stamford Bridge. Papa Cissé has scored a quite stunning second for Newcastle in the third minute of injury time. Remember, we're playing 10 Gosh. minutes of injury time. Gosh. It was a little knockdown from the corner of the box from Amiobi <laughs> that dropped right on the corner of the area and with the outside of his right foot, he has hit it first time and it's curled away from Pedacek and right into the top corner of the net. It gives Newcastle a two-goal lead and that's taken the breath away, Mark Bright. A absolutely stunning goal. They're trying to waste as much time as they can, Newcastle, and the Chelsea bench are complaining. They take a throw, which is knocked down with the chest, but it's just the audacity outside of the foot and it virtually, it's, it's not a lob, he really gives it some and just goes right over check into the far corner. The seats have emptied, everyone's walking out. Stunning, two great goals tonight from uh, Papis Cissé. Yeah, I mean, we mustn't forget the first goal as well, which is a brilliant left foot volley, which Czech had no chance to save either. What a signing Papis Cissé has been. He has now scored 13 goals for the club, and, and that is one you have got to see. Chelsea nil, Newcastle 2. People don't talk about his first goal, because his first so goal, unreal, his still first goal, goal was goal. unbelievable. Yeah. Takes it on one foot and puts it on the other. Oh, it's hits, still a hell of a goal. It. It's a volley, you know? But uh, everyone talks about his second goal, and he said it himself. Mm. It was just a hit and hope job. He was tired; he couldn't be asked anymore, so he just hit it, and it just curls Swear, outside of the foot. It's mm. very rare to, it's that way. Yeah, it was just a. It's normally the other way, isn't it? And he yeah. celebrates in front of in front of uh, the Chelsea fans. Who applauded him? Who applauded him as well? Some give him uh, a couple of gestures, but that's but that's by the by. But uh, unbelievable! Goal Is that Bobby our Susie. greatest ever Premier League goal? Yes. Does, does it be Chiras? Yes. Um, I don't think it'll be Shiraz against Everton in mind. It does. It's on the same level for sure. Uh, I think I, I, I think with Shira, he means every little bit about uh, that volley what's against e Everton. What's, what's easier to do? Shiraz volley. Right, so Shiraz volley is easier to do. If you give Papi C say nine more attempts or 99 more attempts of that, he doesn't score that. If you Shira, Shira, said, Shira said that he's seldom with Everton, he could have hit that 100 more times. But then again, I think, could, but I think Ben Arthur, you can chuck that in there. I yeah. remember David Ginla's Ferenc Varosh goal. I don't know if you've Premier seen League this. Ball. It's in the way of a cup, but it's the cup that comes in and he chests it, knees it, and then flicks it over someone's head and volleys it in the top corner. Like that. Go, was, again, YouTube it. It was our last win of the season, that one, though, because we had two defeats towards the end. We lost yeah, against, City. Uh, against Manchester City with Yaya Torres scoring. They could have scored more. Very good goals. I thought mm. we played well on that day, actually, cause yeah. considering where Man City were, they were oh. fighting for the title. Although we didn't qualify for the Champions League, we finished ahead of the European Champions that season. We did, but uh, the final day was against um, Everton, away from home. Were you there, home Johnny? Game. No. <laughs> uh, there was hope. There was a there was a smither of hope that we could make the Champions League places, but we had to rely significantly oh, on other sides exactly. to drop points. They didn't drop points, and we lost in any way. So we kind of done ourselves with that one. If you remember, we were wearing a maroon kit that day. Papering over the cracks of the ownership a lot. Because we found a couple of hell of a buyers in Kabai and uh, Ben Arfa in particular. Uh, I know was on loan initially and then uh, ben, Denver Bar. The transfer market was working. But, uh, but as we've seen over the years, with obviously more and more French imports, it just didn't work. But I think mm. it was a great season, as you've touched upon. Uh, UEFA Cup football, you wanted, well, Europa League, sorry. Yeah. To get that back is a small consolation. Champions League is a bit of a... But it's still European football, and I think you would have took that at the start of the season. Yeah, for sure. And one thing that I've mentioned in my notes as well, Colaccini made Team of the Year that year, mm. alongside Vin Vincent Company at centre-back. He had an unbelievable season. He hasn't been spoke about much in this video, but he, he was such a good defender that year, and he made Mike Williamson look good. 
then mm. that's an achievement in your career in my book because to make Mike Williamson look good you, you're doing something right because Jesus he was shy well I think Tim Krull made himself the Dutch number one as well yeah, yeah. Tim Krull had an amazing first season until his injuries kicked in you talk about Kabai having a great season bar one season half a season so you see the other Ben Arf had oh, a spell yeah, yeah. He, 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 won, he won two manager well, of the year awards yeah Pardew won manager of the year Whereas Sir Bobby Robson finished, did exactly the same thing, got sacked for it. Yeah, he did. That, that's, that's something to sort that's of. That's a level that Newcastle's were at that point. You look mm, at two look, different sort of it is, Yeah. Mm. But uh, yeah, as you touched on, Johnny won two Manager of the Year awards, and I think he more than deserved them at that point. Even though Roberto Di Matteo worked wonders by winning Chelsea the Champions League in the league, I don't think anybody got close to what Pardew did for Newcastle. No, and as, as much as Pardew was one of my most hated managers by the end of his tenure, he still gave with that season, and it was still mm. an unbelievable season, getting the best out of likes of Kabai. It's one uh, of the things we talked about on when I bumped into him on the train to Swansea. Um, it was the day before we were playing Swansea in. 2017 September 2017 is that when is that the Lascelles game yeah the head yeah. on this clearance off the lane yeah day before I travelled down to Swansea it was where I was living at the time and uh, Alan Pardew was on the same train as I was and yeah uh, we sat and chatted for about 20 minutes and uh, talked a lot about that season it was a, it was Good a fantastic fun, yeah. season but uh, yeah that wraps up the 11-12 yes. season it was a it's quite a roller course for me but it's my personal favourite season so far as watching Newcastle every week obviously I've got my memories of uh, making the Euro- Europa League semi-final and things like that but uh, that was the main season for me so far but uh, yeah there is no use think in the comments below what did you think of this season in particular you've got any Memories of you being all the games like Johnny has. <laughs> um, any goals that you have fond memories of? Any like away day memories of that season? Because there was quite a few. But uh, yeah, get your comments in below. Subscribe to Newcastle Fans TV in there. Yeah, catch us in a bit.